you welcome to another episode of fertility talk with all our own care tadios how are you doing how has been your day so on today's topic actually this topic is informed by so many inquiry that has to do with um uh, young couples who are intending to get married knowing fully well that their genotype is as and that of their partner is also as okay so you have a situation where maybe you are ss or and your partner is as and um, you know I, I i get that inquiry a lot and you know so that's why i am doing this topic so how many of you are still interested are you there okay honestly speaking when i have this kind of inquiry and you know the next thing the next my reaction is are you for real even even though you know that your genotype is as and that of your partner is as but man love is blind i heard this so many times but so but now let's get factual let's be real here okay let's be real because you know in those holding days when um there is a mismatch of as as you know as couple marrying as couple you know it's it used to be that the our parents you know they didn't know they didn't know their genotype they just you know got married and you know they were not uh, informed they weren't informed at all about how important it is to marry a, a, a genotype that you know that ma that matched your own or matches your own but now with um this 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 new age a lot of informations are going around and everybody is aware almost everybody knows that you know if you are as you should not marry as okay but man like i said love is blind and a lot of time this young couple go ahead and get married and they'll be like there could be something we could do to beat this there could be something we could do not to have uh, sickle cell babies okay so i'm just here today to talk about what you can do if you have if you are in that shoes already or you've found your or you're already married and your partner is as and your you or your you are as as well so what you could do to avoid um not having sickle cell babies of course you know that genotype is your complete heritable genetic identity okay so is the sum total of your genes transmitted from one parent to to the to us offspring so you could transmit uh, your genotype okay and there are there are four types there is aa there is as there is ss there is ac okay so talking about who should marry each other aa couple and aa if you are aa you can marry aa if you are as you can marry aa if you are um ss you should marry aa don't go and marry as or ac so ss ac no now or as as no now but man but you're already there now and that is why i am doing this video what can you do what can you do differently this time around to avoid having babies you remember those those holding date um holding day stories where um families would have sickle cells and you know the, the children their children kept dying and dying and dying and you, they will keep um attributing that death to one one um to, to a witchcraft somewhere and all that and all that with the modern trend we shouldn't find ourselves in this um in this um situation again and this is why i am doing this video so you're already married how to beat not having um ss children number one on my list is doing ivf okay and doing ivf there is a method called uh, pre-genetic implantation screening where uh, the gene can actually be selected such that the embryos can be i mean the genes can be can be screened and the the embryos that are sickle cell can be you know removed and you will get to um have embryos or you will the only embryos that will be transferred to you would be that um or embryo that are not a uh, sickle cell gene okay so after the selection only a a or as embryo will be transferred 
into your womb so number one on my list list like i said is ivf using pre-genetic implantation screening to select um the sickle cell baby out of your embryo of course this does not come cheap is expensive having ivf done alone is expensive let alone having pre-genetic uh screening to it you know um so if, if you don't have if you don't have that finance you might not be able to or uh, to opt for this option averagely you'll be looking at about 10 million plus to do this okay having to do ivf use and the uh, pgts or uh, pre-genetic testing or pgt or pgd whichever one is called so you would need fund to do this so that is number one way to beat not having sickle cell baby if both of you have you know the you have um um sickle cell there is a tendency of having um, sickle cell baby because of your blood group okay so number two on my list is so you could opt for donor egg or donor sperm okay using donor egg of a a person or donor sperm of a a person you know you will not need in that in this sense you will not need to say you're looking for money to do uh pre-genetic implantation screening do you understand so um you will just be doing ivf using either donor egg or donor sperm so the question is who is agreeing to shift base now shifting base i mean okay so um we you want to you've agreed that uh, either ways donor egg or donor sperm should be used so is it the lady are you going to agree um, that a donor egg should be used for you to fertilize your partner's sperm? Or if you're the guy or you're the man, are you going to agree that a donor sperm should be used so, so that you can use your wife's egg? Whichever one, the table is, is all yours. So, you know, these are just um, um, what you have to contend with if you have found yourself or you want to find yourself in this kind of situation okay number three thing you can do to avoid having baby with sickle cell is actually a procedure called aminosynthesis okay so aminosynthesis is a is a procedure in which the amniotic fluid is removed from the uterus for testing purposes okay so the amniotic fluid is the fluid that surrounds and protects baby inside the womb so this fluid contains fetal cells and various protein although amino synthesis can provide valuable information about your baby's head your, is, your baby's genetic it is also important that it comes with its own risk and you know you have to be prepared that there could be risk of losing the baby miscarriage needle injury hr sensitization infection and infection transmission all these are the risks you need to contend with if you're choosing aminocytosis as an option okay so what aminocytosis what it implies also is that your your partner your wife needs to be or your partner needs to be pregnant first before that will be done okay so is is a is a whole lot of risk here you know is a whole lot of risk so she will need to be pregnant before that can be done okay so another method you could use to also screen out having um ss baby is when you um, do cvs cvs by cvs by cvs i mean chorionic villus sampling okay so it's kind of similar to aminocytosis but this time around it's, 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 this is also a is also a prenatal test in which the sample of the chorionic villi is removed from the placenta for testing okay the sample can be taken through the cervix or through the abdominal wall okay so during pregnancy you know placenta provides oxygen and nutrients for the growing baby and removes waste product from the baby's blood the chorionic villus sampling can be done as early as 10 weeks of the pregnancy so i kind of like this part um because if it is done very early and you know it doesn't go the usual way we expect it you could opt um to terminate the pregnancy you know unlike uh, aminocytosis that um you know you have to wait for like 15 weeks before you do that okay so all these are just the risk that are there when you married a genotype that is not compatible with yours okay also bear in mind that ivf is not 100 percent so imagine you spending um 
um, about um, 10, 11 million doing IVF, pre-genetic implantation screening, and at the end of the day, God forbid, the IVF treatment itself failed. That could be very devastating, okay? So on this note, I'm going to sign out on this topic, and I could only tell you to or, or advise you to do the right thing is very very important in very very important you have to do the right thing at the right time okay i think uh, maybe before you start entering a relationship proper you could um ask your your partner his genotype his blood group you know just to be sure that both of you are very very compatible <laughs> you know and this is all i have to say today about this topic I do hope you enjoyed it. Okay. Thanks for watching today's episode of Fertility Talk with Ola Ronke Tadios. For more inquiries, please, you can comment below. For consultation, kindly call the number showing on your screen. If you want to book appointment with us to, to, to see us consigning how to um, render any of these services, kindly call the number showing on your screen. Okay. So uh, please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And follow our Instagram page at Meet Surrogate Mother. Thank you and God bless.